Today we look at the Yetis and the Bat spells. A lot of you guys have asked me to teach this strategy. Make sure that it is clear to you how to use it so we will break it down and then I get into multiplayer to have some fun. Alrighty guys, so let's break down an attack first so you know exactly how to use the strategy, then we can have some fun with me showcasing more of the let's play style of things. So what you want to look for in bases when you are attacking with the yetis and the bats is making sure you can take advantage of areas of the base where there is limited splash damage. So what you want to try and do is look for bases that have single target inferno towers. Now that's mainly because at Town Hall 13 13, you have two scatter shots to deal with and that means that that's two extra splash defenses that you've got to ensure your bats can get through you've got the wizard towers you've got the scatter shots potentially multi-target infernos so that's where you want to look for single target infernos if you can now you never ever want to send the bats to the town hall you will get to see this guys you always need to take this with the yetis obviously the drag bat is a common strategy which is very similar but ultimately you want to get the town hall with the actual push of the attack not with the bats because you just won't do it let's go ahead and start this one off then we have a battle blimp that comes into this single target inferno to take out this entire area of the base tries to get the wizard towers in this area but what it allows is even though we don't get the more deeper wizard tower it allows pathing for the yetis as they move into the base but it also allows pathing for the bats when they come in so let's take a look at it we do have one balloon which was used ahead of the battle blimp now whenever you are sending in the battle blimp just send in that one balloon guys it makes sure to test for tornado traps and also any black bombs now notice how the balloon was popped or the battle blimp right on top of the single target right where you want them open the blimp up where you want the troops to drop off we managed to get one of the wizard towers clear that area and we also have the grand warden clearing a funnel on the left hand side so we've got the right hand side cleared the grand warden is a prime target to do this now a lot of people ask me why use the grand warden as a walk instead of the arch queen and this is one of the reasons look he's drawn to the yetis so whilst the grand warden has a longer range than the archer queen he can often reach deeper defenses into the base he's also very easy to pull and make sure that he doesn't walk around guys and in this case because he set up the funnel on the left and we had the battle blimp setting the funnel on the right the yetis drive straight into the center of the base which is where we want them to go and we can take down the scatter shot the town hall many of the dangerous splash damages that we do not want the bats getting to now this is a really important aspect here guys in that you will see the second phase of this attack starting very shortly even though we still have the yetis doing huge amount of damage over to the town hall area so take a look at it we have the royal champion coming in towards this bottom side meanwhile the yetis are still doing all of the work across to the other side now you always want to ensure that your phases are overlapped so that you're not wasting time we cannot do anything else over to the yetis it's not like we can use a rage spell or anything like that it's really just the archer queen's ability which is the only thing we could change in this raid we've already got pathing there's no way we're going to get the other scatter shot so we might as well start the next phase and that is going to be the royal champion taking out this bottom section so again when the bats come in you will notice when we get to that phase the pathing is even easier for them so now they're coming in straight away so we almost have one two three phases simultaneously going on here and that's what you always want to make sure you are moving to the next phase as soon as you can you don't want to wait too long that's where you could time fail now the royal champion down to the bottom actually ends up doing a really good job here taking out 
two wizard towers. So again, that means we don't have to worry about the wizard towers in terms of taking out the bats, but it also allows the bats to get into the center to get the eagle and the scatter shot early. Now, what I would always recommend with the bats is that if you are doing a bat wave, which is exactly what we did in this one, the bats came in from the top of the base, you want to make sure that you can get your bats to the splash damage around about halfway through if that makes sense now what that means is as the bats come in they have a huge number now in the middle of the base which means when you do have to freeze that splash defense the bats can take it down quicker imagine if this was the first defense and the bats weren't fully spawned they might not take it down you might actually have to use two freeze spells to get through the splash where you might have only had to use one when the bats were formed in a swarm so make sure you are planning that you don't necessarily want to hit the splash straight away and if you are doing that if there's only one splash damage you might actually want to freeze it and drop a rage for more of a bat bomb method get rid of the splash straight away and then they can move from there but if you are using a bat wave as in this one you want to hit the splash when you can take it down quickly so let's move to some multiplayer in summary for the strategy though it's really taking out the splashes method as best as possible and making sure that the bats can take down the single infernos any of the point defense and get them through unscathed so with the yetis and the bats this is the army composition i like to use now i do have jump spells to get access through the base it does mean i only have one freeze spell so let's see how we get on i have the ice golems but they obviously need to be used on the outside of the base which means it might be a bit tricky now we did do pretty well a couple of days ago it was about a week ago we used this strategy i will link that video at the end of this one as i mentioned but in terms of my base we're slowly getting there virtually maxed at this point we have walls and just a couple of other buildings to upgrade i think the dark licks are drills i want to upgrade together my friend beaker does this where he upgrades all of a single defense or a type of building and i think it's kind of cool we don't need any dark elixirs so I think it's the ideal building if we're going to do that. In terms of the season pass, I am around about a quarter of the way through, which is where I normally am at this stage. Let me know where you are in terms of your points, but I don't tend to focus on the challenges very much. I'll wait until the end, and then if I haven't quite got all of the way up, I'll then look at the challenges in a little bit more depth. However, let's get out there and see what we find. Now, when about two days ago we found a base with 1.2 million gold and 1.3 million elixir i think it was which is pretty good guys this base might not be the most leveled in the world but i think it has okay loot anything over 500,000 is what i'm after this one has 600,000 and it does have single target infernos but the difficulty is that there's plenty of wizard towers now let's just figure the, let's just figure something out here i think if i start with the grand warden i might actually guys might might be able to get this town hall let's see how this goes let's use a balloon on the outside because that will get the mortar then the bomb tower just kind of speed things up for this grand warden and I, I'm, I'm just aiming for the town hall that is my target then i can actually use my king look on the outside here Let's get a wizard in as well and let's actually go with the royal champion just to help speed things up here might have put them a little bit close to the grand warden i don't want them going anywhere near that grand warden because i want him to get the town hall but he's not he's going after them which means we're going to have to go with the jump we're going to then have to go with the yetis and the queen to get into this town hall area let's use the king let's use another jump let's use the poison we can use a rage to get through here with that grand warden's ability royal champion's ability goes off we can actually freeze the single to try and protect that royal champion now that might not have been the best play because remember we've got the bats to get through here as well let's use the siege barracks up to the top and let's just wait it out let's go with the ice golem and i think let's start with the bats from down at six o'clock here we've got to make sure that the bats get through this wizard tower and then move through the rest now i don't think we can get much value 
Oh, no, 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 no. They might not get to the wizard tower at the bottom. They do, in fact. I used the ice golem. I used the ice golem in order to try and tank. We've still got the queen's ability. There's not much we can do. The wizard tower was distracted to the queen, which is exactly what we needed, guys. We now have the hog riders coming out. We've got the wizard tower at the top distracted. And there you go. It might not have been the most upgraded base in the world, but it certainly is a nice demonstration of of this attack strategy and pulls us in over 600,000 gold and elixir plus the loot bonus means we get nearly 1 million that's pretty epic it does at least show the strategy in general do we have anything left i just seen the archers <laughs> Does that ever happen to you? Because what happens is when I go back to base, all of my troops won't have cooked up because I have two archers. I'll have to just drop the archers anyway. But that did indeed show you the strategy pretty well. Now, if you do want to see the video where we did more attacks with the Yeti Bats, I just kept it relatively brief because the other videos was all with the Yeti Bats and me attacking. So this one, I just wanted to bring you one attack with me attacking and breaking it down. But if you want to see that video, I'll link it right here, guys. Until tomorrow, though, when we will be back, you guys have a good one and take care.